Right, welcome back to another edition of this Greenkeepers Chronicles that I've been doing over the last few weeks. And I've been really enjoying this, I hope you have been too. And I'm here with John McLaughlin. So first yeah. of all, John, welcome to the channel. Thanks. Course manager at Warrington Golf Club. It's nice to be speaking to someone who isn't named Stuart, because I don't know if you watched <laughs> yeah, the last yeah, two. I, watched the last two, I thought yeah. every Greenkeepers or yeah. course manager's <laughs> name was Stuart and yeah. Scottish. Um, start off with, first of all, uh, my knowledge of John and a golf course. I came here about four or five years ago, first visit. I don't live too far away to be honest with you. The first time I'd been, and I think you just arrived then, John. Yeah, you? almost four years ago, yeah. And the course was in, or, or in that short period, it was looking mm. in, in decent nick. Then I come back about 12 months, 18 months later, and already John was starting to make mm. some big changes. And we're four years in, mm. and we're going to have a chat about where he is now. Mm. But first, couple of easy questions yeah, yeah. before I go all Paxman mm. on you. The, uh, <laughs> career so far mate, where have you where have you been from, from here? Yeah, so I sort of, I'd always been interested in golf since 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 I was 30 and all, all I've done is really played golf. Yeah, I, uh, I'll ask you now as well, you're, yeah. you're a pretty decent player aren't you? Yeah, so I've played round scratch for sort yeah, of 20 yeah. years, right, right round about, so, uh, and I've been sort of a member and attached to West Links for yes. 25 years almost. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, yeah. career-wise, went to yeah. So I was uh, I'd all, I'd always you know, been really keen on my golf and played a lot of golf, but my putting wasn't quite up to it. So realised that I was never going to be a professional. Or right. I actually prefer playing amateur golf and competitive stuff right. to a decent standard. So uh, from there, I thought, right, how can I get into golf? What, what, I didn't really want to turn pro and be a teaching pro, uh, and I was always really science-based in school. So I right. thought, right. Uh, I, I'll have a go at greenkeeping, uh, you know, do the science. So I went to Central Lancashire Uni in 1998, and then I did sort of a placement year, sort of 18 months, two years at Glen Eagles. Okay. So I did me training in 1999 to, to 2000, Glen yeah, at, at Glen Eagles. So it, it was a blessing in disguise, really, because I'd not, I'd obviously been in and about golf for sort of seven, eight years, but not. You know, done no formal greenkeeper training. I'd done some education and, and all the lectures and stuff, but I hadn't actually worked on a course. Right. So it was fantastic to go to Glen Eagles and do my training because yeah, what a place, yeah. I was instilling really good work ethic, yeah. and how to do things properly from day one. So I, I never ever really got to find out how to do a bad job. Yeah, because yeah. Only excellence yeah, so so I did two years, <clears throat> coming up to two years at Glen Eagles, and then went back to uni, finished me sort of turf science uh, qualifications and the rest of it, and then uh, and then yeah, I, I went travelling then with with my qualifications and, and my experience I got from Glen Eagles. So wasn't you a golf course over in Australia, one of the yeah? The so biggest? so from a lot of in Australia, a lot of the the top. Clubs like to take ex Glen Eagles staff on because oh, they, right. because they know they've got yeah, yeah. pedigree yeah. stuff. So I went over, worked at Royal Melbourne for the Heineken Classic, which Ernie Els won, where he even shot sixty in, in shot sixty in the third round. Right. The, the the membership went berserk and he shot seventy nine in the fourth round. Oh, right. the team, but he won it by a shot. Yeah, the yeah. greens were that unjust and fast. He could just set it up on, on the How greens. So right. so when I we, we lived in Melbourne for, for pretty much a year then. I, I was touring from Australia for four years, then right. I went back out, I worked at, uh, on the Australian Open in 2003 at the Australian Golf Club, which is one of Australia's most prestigious courses, uh, so I spent a fair bit of time there, uh, and then from there I, I pretty much travelled, Did you? Yeah. so went out, uh, so I did a lot of visiting golf courses and work and doing tournament support, so went out and worked on the PGA Tour at Riv Riviera Country Club. Right. Uh, have you worked a lot of the major venues in terms of events as well? Uh, I've done a lot. Yeah, I've been I've been to work done and been involved in so even the Solheim Cup in two thousand at a lot Lomond. I was a press officer, helped the press team. Right. Uh, I also worked on the European Tour, ladies tour for sort of ten twelve years on on the scoring teams and some staging and and right. Well, it gives me contacts. Uh, well, again, a question yeah. I was going to ask at the back end, but yeah. while we're on it now, is that, and next year you, you were um, you at uh, Port Rush? Yeah, so next year I'm working with uh, the team at Royal Port Rush for, for the Open. That's the one I, I, I've always wanted to do yeah. uh, at Port Rush yeah. and, uh, and the Open. So, because yeah. I've entered the Open quite a few times in the qualifying, oh, have you right? played in the qualifying. Yeah, so yeah. I've never wanted to work the Open because I always had this dream yeah, that I might play one yeah, day, yeah. but I've sort of give up on that right. now. So this is the first 
first one I've ever really wanted right, to be part okay. of. And my close friends, course manager, and I've oh, right. played in the North Island Amateur at Port Rush, so yeah. really familiar with it and spent a bit of time there. Yeah. So, so that's fantastic. So I'm at, I'm at Port Rush Brilliant. for the Open, and then and then I'm back at Glen Eagles for the Solent Cup in September. Oh, right, well. okay. so, so you've got plenty of experience. Of these major venues yeah, as well, so, and yeah. you're always learning there. Yeah, so learn. that's the the idea. Is it? That's where I try and get my inspiration. So uh, again, you go went to Riviera, worked the PGA Tour, of Asian Tour. So I've been pretty much involved at some level on. Yeah, yeah, on fantastic. Every world tour yeah, yeah, really, yeah. So. Certainly got a great CV there. I yeah, mean, all so, this experience. Yeah, massive, so that was. It? So, so it's just. It's not really a job. It's because I enjoy it. It's yeah, a hobby, yet yeah. yeah, So, and it's nice to have a hobby, which is is work. So, well, we we yeah. we've, we've been literally talking for an mm. hour off camera already, yeah, haven't we? Yeah. Before this started, that John's love for this mm. whole uh, I don't know what your terminology, greenkeeping mm. game is massive. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. It's so it's more say. of a passion than a yeah, job. Yeah, which is nice. yeah, yeah. Just back to no. I'll ask you one last question mm. before we move on, because I've asked everybody else. Mm. I've got a feeling. I've what's in your Twitter account? Football. Everton fan, unfortunately, yet. Yeah. So, uh, should we end the interview here, mate? That's it. Know, Can't yeah, talk football, unfortunately, yeah. 20 years of pain for me, unfortunately. I, I think, to be fair, they're happy yeah, they're picking, yeah, they're yeah, picking good, they're yeah, picking up, yet. Yeah, so, it, it's promising, and obviously, the the new stadium and the pipeline yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the rest well, of it. So, so, yeah, for, for a change, it's looking, well, it's looking brighter. Back to the golf, Warrington, yeah. Warrington Golf Course. Mm. Um, how would you say, Parkland Course? Yeah, so when I took over sort of four years ago, it, it was very much parkland. It had sort of a parkland feel to it. It was sort of a lot, a lot of planting had gone on in the tree planting in the seventies and eighties. So, so, so we play typical parkland. Although the site is actually a heathland site. Obviously, right. we're, we're only sort of half a mile from Stockton Heath, and yeah. obviously the name Heath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we are in pretty much Stockton Heath, which they wouldn't have called it Stockton Heath if it, the area the only resembled yeah. a heath. So f from my very first times at the club, I pretty much realised that it, it, it's sort of a very fast, fair and playing golf course. Yeah. And it's acidic grassland as well. And it's quite unique, the site. And we're dominated by fine fescues and, and we're, we're on sandstone, so we're very free draining. Uh, and the old photos of the course and reading the history books and looking into it, they used to call the, the golf course the Blasted Heath. Right. So back in the 40s and 50s, it was very it barren and windswept right. and very, uh, uh, and yeah, uh, and just referencing to that small quote, the Blasted mm -hmm. Heath, we, we knew we were on something and heathlands in the UK and definitely in the Northwest, minimal. So yeah, they are limited, the, yeah. the, there's, in, in the Northwest of England, you, 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 you've basically, Got Delamere standing alone, yes, really. Also, yeah. So, uh, have you returned it a bit then? Yeah. So, so that? over the last last four years, you know, it, we do a lot of forums and speak to the members. And, and, and from day one, I'd sort of said to them, this this should be an unbelievable heathland. It shouldn't really be a parkland. It's lost its character. Yeah. And we still had the acid, the grasslands, uh, and it still played fair. So over the last sort of four years. We have started to return it to more of a heathland yeah, yeah. Uh, because the site's fantastic. So we, we are making amazing progress. We're starting to grow a lot more rough in. We're encouraging the fescues. Yeah. Uh, the green complexes were quite tight and quite small, so we've opened up them massively. We're putting right. in the swales and runoffs of, of what a heathland will be, really. We're transplanting some heathers around the site and then. We are also looking to encourage our oaks and our Scots pines and some of our birches that will be more characteristic for a heathland in the northwest. How, of England. how long will it take to, to, to see the real noticeable change yeah, then for, for that? So we, we've, we've made great progress in the last two years, so we've almost got a heathland feel. We, no. We've got a lot of the fescues around the fairway bunkers, around the old greenside bunker. Uh, and, and we're really firming up the site, we're firming up the aprons, the fairways, we're bringing in the fescues, so it already, already now, yeah, phase. so it, it feels a lot more heathlandy now, we're probably 18 months, two years away for to have that real Where you true heathland feel, but we're, we're well on the way, well on the way, and, and the feedback we're getting on that is really strong. So, so you've, you've, you've done a lot in the four years, I know mm. that, I, I do, I, I keep, mm. uh, I, I look at the Twitter account of both yours and the clubs, and again, yeah. you, you see the developments, it's fantastic the work that goes on here. Um, 
it, biggest achievement or bigger achievements? What noticeable change around the course, or what, what would we yeah, cause? Or? So, so we've made we have made good progress. The site's always been fantastic, and, and, and we'd always managed the greens well, and the bank grasses were coming in. And but the the one thing that I'm I'm proud of is more how we develop and inspire the staff. Right. So it's not if someone's to say what was your biggest achievement in four years at Warrington. It wouldn't be the course. The course is still. We've still got two, three years to go to get the course where it needs to be. Yeah. But what what we have achieved is we've we've really developed and inspired the staff. Right. And our level of. Uh, How have you done that? Staff then? operation. Well, so we've brought in some some management philosophies and uh, and we get inspiration from other industries. So we right. look at. Uh, Maybe the aeronautical industry, what hours they work, how they operate, look at the army, how they're structured. Yeah. Even I study a lot of football managers, see how they inspire and develop the team. So we've brought in a lot of sort of management philosophies and, uh, and uh, brought a new approach to developing and inspiring staff. So we've now got a team at Warrington that operate on a very high standard and, and they operate sort of at a world class level. So, Fantastic. so obviously, the, the course isn't at a world class level yet because we're, we're still working on that and, yeah. and, and to be world class takes a hell of a lot but with the staff and the operational side of things we're at a standard which I, I believe is sort of world class That's already. Right. Fantastic, yeah. so, fantastic. Yeah. I, I know that and I'm going to have to read this one a bit in terms of the, you, mm. you've been nominated or you're in the final of the Golf Environment Awards and that's this is the second year that you've been uh, into the into the final. Yeah. So how how have you achieved that? Yeah. So one of the about? one of the big things that uh, that I'm really fond of is sort of health, well-being, and sustainability, and environment and ecology. So one of the one of the things when I started four years ago was I wanted to bring in is a lot of uh, environmental awareness and and how we operate and and our carbon footprint. So. Uh, we pretty much started that sh straight away so we, we compost every day every week we, we generate sort of 60 tons of compost a year so it saves so 600 tons we we save three and a half thousand pounds a year in, in important soils because we create our own returns and composts we have uh, our own honey beehive so we, we generate 20 to 30 jars of honey every year we have a herb garden that we supply the chef with herbs for wow. some of the meals. We're, we're a paperless uh, department, pa pa basically a paperless club now, right. so we don't deal with uh, everything um, uh, from health and safety to our everything's on softwares that right. we manage and develop. So I, I actually work remotely, so I don't really need an office. I can't, we, we, we sort of, uh, it's, it's all on the cloud in different cloud based right. systems. So. Pretty much running a course of the future, really, isn't it? You know, that's yeah, so it's more ahead of its time, maybe. It's in other industries. What we are doing is commonplace, right. so it's not. You're bringing it. Into yeah, so we're not. We're not doing anything new, really. It's just we're linking it together. Yeah, so, so we even our cleaning products are enzyme based, so we don't use any chemicals to clean any of our machines. Even our hand washers are enzyme based, and. Uh, yeah, everything gets recycled. Nothing, nothing goes to landfill from 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 the department and pretty much from from the club. So we even have clove recycling stations. We recycle all our metals. We shred all our paper, and that goes into compost. So we have a sort of a sustainable operation, which saves us a lot of money. We have electric hand dryers, so we're not reusing paper unnecessarily. Electric, so, mo electric motors. Yeah. There. So we also operate uh, a lot of our maintenance fleet is electric now so yeah. we, we have the latest Toro hand mowers which are electric uh, all our strimmers and, and um, small machinery is electric some of our runarounds are electric and right. we're looking to bring in uh, we're, we're doing a partnership with still next year to bring in their some electric mowers right. so they are autonomous mowers so yeah to, to run sort of one of their electric mowers you're only using 35 pounds of electricity Right. Uh, a year yeah. and you could be cutting a hectare of grass without a week wow. so saving on emissions and fuel is, is amazing so it's very good to see let's, yeah. hope, let's hope you win well yeah so fingers crossed yeah. we're up against St Andrews and some other really good clubs but we, we find out in January if we oh. become the most sort of ecological sensitive and sustainable club in the country in January oh, good so. luck with that one good yeah. luck with that um, it's fair to say that um, this is how I describe it mm. from looking in anyway uh, John has been very much a modern mm. thinker, uh, forward thinking in terms of the um, 
processes, let's say, that have been used. And I've seen a, a little clip on Twitter this week um, of a piece of machinery that was drilling down into a green. And what was all that about? Yeah, Is that so, new or? So pretty much, yeah, we're, we're sort of looking at uh, something we do need to work on and that we're looking looking at is in, in improving our green so we are the, the green swore composition is fantastic but the they can soften up in the winter and we do get a lot of play so we're always driving to see how we can maintain our greens better and create better standards so in the last 18 months or last eight, last year we're, we're looking at the latest technology with low disturbance to get our greens performing and draining uh, uh, as good as anywhere in the world so uh, over the last year we, we've done some re drilling so we've drilled down to 12 meters and inserted some rods into greens uh, that's worked fantastically well that was big science in America that's just come over to Europe recently right. Uh, we've done some sand injection that's worked really well and then this week on Tuesday we had sort of one per poor performing green is that the machine I've seen on the so yeah so this on, on Tuesday we brought in a new machine which drills down to 700 mil right. injects uh, high pressure uh, air into the green and then follows that up with an injection of uh, a teramol which is a, a drainage substance which helps the green drain right, okay. so we it's only been done on a couple of clubs right. in, probably in Europe if not the world so we, we sort of almost at the forefront of trying yeah, yeah. new products so how will you know when that's if, if well we've done that on Tuesday we injected where well, we put 300 holes into one green we, we put uh, 300 kg of this drainage material in, into the green and into the fissures and injected it in. That was Tuesday. We've had almost an inch of rain now on Thursday. Yeah, yeah, well, right down. Uh, yeah. uh, um, that green normally today w would be unplayable. Yeah. Today it's back on the green and it's never been so firm. Wow. So that was only the So yet within two days the green has gone from the softest on the course to almost the firmest wow. and that is in two days. So. Happy with that. So yeah, so it's it's early signs, and we have to monitor that yeah, over yeah. over the winter period and uh, and over the next summer see how it performs. But that had sort of in in one day we had sort of four guys working on it. We had, we had fourteen man hours put into that green on, on Tuesday. Yeah, and then. But if you know, get and then yeah, so now and then results with, within with that, four, within forty eight hours we, we we've got a green that's performing and yeah. we've connected the the top profile into the sub subsoil which is sandstone and then we've got some areas of sand so it's performing already forty eight hours and the green's been closed and it's back playable. Yeah, yeah. So we will look to take Clegg readings on that and we can monitor firmness and moisture levels so we do daily readings to see how that will perform over a longer period of time and if, if that was to be successful it's something we could roll Spread out, out okay, yeah. across the course over two, three years and we know we're going to have greens that are playable all year. All year, yeah. So I mean, I'll, I'll throw some images over now. We mm. had a walk out onto the course um, just an hour or so ago. This is uh, December the 20th, is it today? Yeah. December the 20th, what you're looking at, the condition yeah. of this course. Uh, one notable thing from four years ago when I first got here, and the, 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 this is apron you're looking at, the feed into these greens, you can pop from about 40 yards away, it's incredible condition. Mm. And, and like I said, December the 20th, 100 odd people playing there today, must be happy. Yeah, so we've got a, a Thursday competition, a pros competition, which is really well uh and that's on the back of two days. That what they're seeing is back on two or three days of quite heavy rain as well, haven't we? Yeah. So we've had we've had sort of we've had four inches of rain in the last week. It's yeah. been one of the it's been the wettest spell. We we monitor rainfall and we track weather patterns. And November was great. Early parts of December was great. The last week, a lot of courses have closed in the area, and yeah. uh, it's fantastic that a lot of the work we've done on the course we're now being able to achieve almost summer standards going, the winter, going into Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, over the last couple of years, I, I mentioned this to uh, Stuart Hogg last week, difficult conditions for green maintenance, I suppose, has it? Okay. Yeah, Hot so the, the, last, the last 18 months uh, have been some of the most challenging for green keepers in the last 50 years. Right. So we've gone from two of the wettest winters. Can I just make a note that, that remember that golfers yeah, are there, yeah, almost yeah, not, yeah. including me, yeah, will be winning yeah, so, and not realising what it's so like. Yeah, We've gone. For, we've had two of the wettest winters on on record the last the last two winters, right. and then we followed one of the wettest winters on record into one of the driest springs and the hottest summers on record. So I think the the, the, 
this summer that was as dry as 1957. Right. Or, so we are the weather patterns uh, and the climate change, call it what you want, is 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 changing, and we're getting a lot of extremes now. So. Yeah. In the in the last ten years, we we are noticing a difference yeah, yeah. in how in how the golf course is playing yeah. the seasons, seasons are changed, longer yet. Yeah. So we're we're having so, so this year we've we've played summer conditions up until December, which would have been unheard yeah, of. Yeah. Normally, yeah. people were putting the clubs away in September. Yeah. Whereas now, sort of notoriously, January February, we ones. can get some some yeah, bad weather yeah. and cold weather. So on that basis, and whether whether it's a uh, weather conditions, climate change or whatever else, mm -hmm. how do you see uh, the green keeping role developing or uh, green course maintenance developing in the area? Have you seen much changes? Yeah, so I think there's there's a lot of uh, chemical restrictions now on, on, in the industry with, uh, probably rightly, obviously we're very environmentally friendly and like to be very ecologically aware, so a lot of this, you know, pesticides that, that that could be deemed dangerous in countries they're getting banned so, but it just takes uh, weapons away from the green keeper that, yeah, that, yeah. that can prevent worms and grubs yeah. and Stuart mentioned this yeah, as yeah. well and, uh, and and diseases and green so the green keeper has to be more educated now they have right. to be more proactive they have to really on the ball because if they're not it, it's they can get caught out so yeah. I think that the green keepers the modern day green keepers are going to have not, not that they were in the past but you're going to have to be really clued up really well educated have really well educated staff yeah. and, and then to move forward and keep the standards the same you've almost got to manage things differently yeah, yeah. so uh, so uh, change is inevitable so yeah so there is a, a th th this is sort of now the last year or two is some of the biggest changes in, in, in the industry in the last 50 years but the technology of mowers is, is ever improving the, the 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 machinery is a big one we can get sand out now in the winter time and when it's wet right. we can top dress more there's a, the, the the machinery the advancements in these machinery the last five years has been incredible right. we we've got uh electric mowers coming in next year we're doing some product testing and, and they're bringing in some electric mowers and we're, we're running them on the course so it's moving with the times. Yeah, other yeah, indus evolved, yeah, yeah, other industries, uh, engineering and car construction, they're using a lot of robots and, and other machinery. And it's only inevitable that they, these things are going to come across mm. into the golf course management. It's not necessarily a way of getting rid of staff, but it's, stream, it, 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 it's creating a better product and, and more. Yeah, yeah. More, I mean, the, the question I ask, I, I thought I, I've not asked the previous in the previous mm. two. Uh, chats I've had is that what about uh, maybe not shouldn't be asking green mm. stuff this but what about artificial greens are they ever something that would play a part do you think or would that not really yeah well football is already a lot of the investment now the FA are making and Sport England and and, and it, it, it's probably not, it's not the best for the environment but obviously a lot of the kids are coming through now and, uh, and all the academies and pitches, they're moving to 4G 4G, and 3G, pitch, 4G right. pitches so that's happened in football now my little boy plays football and he hasn't had a game called off this season because yeah, yeah. he's playing on the yeah, latest yeah. 4G pitches. Yeah. Two years ago, every every match in, in Liverpool, every called junior, off. they were called off. Yeah. So it's the, the cost now to maintain a golf green and, and fine, fine turf is, is huge. Right. So for some of these smaller venues and, 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 and to get kids into golf, yeah. It's, it's almost that that will be the way of the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see that. I know there's a course in Liverpool, a quite a golf centre quite forward thinking they're looking to put a nine hole course in right. Astro Turf Greens they've right. got an Astro Turf short game area yeah, yeah. you see a lot of the pros now putting in uh, Astro Turf Greens into the gardens yeah yeah, and, home, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah that's almost the way yeah yeah for, for golf to survive it needs to evolve and, yeah. uh, and that's the way we need participation to be high for, for kids and, and other people so, so perhaps that's something that so that, yeah yeah game, so right? I think yeah to, to, to bring people into the game I think we need to evolve and that will be part of it excellent well one of the things I just have a quick conversation towards at the end of this interview is I've seen uh, I've seen John at a number of major events this year watching from the crowd and joining mm -hmm. in uh, with some celebrations mm. as well. Ryder Cup you were at with your pal I think it is. Yeah, it? yeah, so uh because golf is my hobby and it's what my life. I like to go to all these as many events and sort of take part of 
one of my best friends, Caddy's for Tommy Fleetwood. So right. I've, and I've known Tommy since he was eight years. Old. I've played against him twice. Right. I've, I've played him a number of times. Yeah. So, Did you beat him? Uh, yeah, I beat <laughs> yeah. him twice. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. But don't tell him. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, so yeah, so with, with me close friends and uh, and some of my best friends being involved in, in the yeah. golf industry, so. It's nice to go out and support and yeah, yeah. be there. So yeah, when the US Open at Shinnecock Hills, uh, the Ryder Cup. Yeah. Uh, the next year I'm at the Open. Uh, I, w I was at the last Ryder Cup at Glen Eagles yeah. as well. Uh, that must have been great though. So when you go to somewhere like Shinnecock Hills and you're seeing this, mm. obviously you're uh, supporting these uh, people, but you must be looking at the, you probably look at the golf course a bit different than yeah, I do. Yeah, so, so a lot of the, a lot, well, I tell my wife a lot of the trips are educational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's. That sounds all, all, Yeah. So that's all, although I am going to support, and it's great to be involved. Obviously, they know my passion and interest yeah, yeah. Is, is golf courses. So it's nice for them to have the friends out and, and yes. people to support. But I'm also looking to get as much inspiration. Yeah, yeah. From these venues and how they operate and how they're yes. structuring the days and how they're setting up. So. I always try and get involved and find out what's going on behind yeah. the scenes and looking at the work people are doing. So, is it an, 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 an is it a favourite course that you've got, or do they do you like certain yeah, bits, well, of certain courses? Me, my favourite course is the old course at St right. Andrews. Sort of for a course to be six hundred years old and it still be relevant is yeah. just yeah, it's mind blowing really yeah, yeah. if you think about it. So. For St Andrews to be the first ever true course and for it to still be relevant to this day and still hold open championships, yeah. that is the blueprint for any other course right. that's ever been created. So it's hard not to say that is yeah, the, yeah. although people may think it's banned and don't like it, that is the ultimate because that is the being the yeah. blueprint for any every other course. So I think any leading architect or any any person that is really deep into the golf, yeah, we'll you go. can't really look past yeah, no. the old course, but obviously I've worked it. I've visited 55 of the top 100 courses in the world, so yeah. I, I've visited a lot. And my, my favourite course is, other than St Andrews, is Royal County down in Northern Ireland. Right. So I've been over there and played a number of times, and it's just mind blowing. Yeah, the, the condition of the course, the the uh, the loop, the, the, how it's structured, how it plays. The, right. It, not been there. Not not played. So yeah, so Royal County down would be my favourite yeah. course to play, but. I, it would be the old courses. You know, can't goes. look back. Yeah. Yeah, if yeah. I had one course to play, yeah, I would go to see it every day. Yeah, uh, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, I'm going to wrap it up there because, uh, I'm, and we literally could. I've had to tri trim a few of these questions because we could go on for hours. We see John, very enthusiastic, great to listen to, very uh, educated in what he does, um, and it's been it's been nice to chat with you. Really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and any questions, comments, as ever, stick them down below and I'll do my very best to answer. And uh, thanks, as ever, for watching. Thank you to John. Right, yes, thank you. And uh, I'll see you all very soon.